and welcome to me looking at stuff and talking about it. Yes, we're a reaction video now. Hold on, we need the thumbnail. So first on the agenda, we're going to talk about, like, because there's been so much that's happened within, like, such a short space of time. Uh, and I feel like I just need a video to just sort of digest it all so you guys can have all the information you can. So if you have been around for the past two weeks on the channel, it basically became a Little Nightmares channel. Um, but the first thing that I want to talk about is this. Um, this is an IGN article that says Little Nightmares creator confirms it's done with the series, but Namco could carry it on regardless. Uh, this was something I was made aware of uh, quite um, like early on from Little Nightmares 2 once I completed it. Um, so this is not referring to Bandai, this is referring to Tarsia. So this is uh, Tarsia Studios, I should say. I can't even remember what I said in the first episode of my Little Nightmares playthrough. Transia Studios. Transia Studios, I think that was it. For the last six years, our mission at Tarsia Studios has been to create mesmerizing worlds. Little Nightmares was our first attempt and it was a huge success. I personally love how Little Nightmares has gathered fans around the world over the course of the last four years. From the fan art, extensive fan theories, <laughs> thank you, you're welcome, and genuine reactions. It all has been amazing to witness. Our collaboration with Bandai Namco Entertainment Europe has been extremely satisfying. They listened to our creative vision and took our crazy ideas and ambitions to heart. That being said, it is bittersweet to announce that we are leaving the world of Little Nightmares behind us. The Nightmares will always be dear to us at the studio since being acquired by the Embracer Group in December 2019. It is now time for us to embark on a new chapter, create new IPs and explore new worlds. Personally, I'm very excited to see what our studio creates and counting down the days until we can welcome our fans. So, in a word, basically, Little Nightmares isn't over, and I know that's what these articles like to say. Like, uh, if you just look at this IGN article, it's like, Little Nightmares confirms that it's done with the series, but Namco could come, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just meant to be a clickbait. But Tarsia Studios um, was always the, the little kind of indie developer that came up with Little Nightmares, who then approached Bandai for the funds, for the resources to make the game that they wanted to make. Um, I don't have anything necessarily bad to say that, you know, that they're leaving it. I think everybody outgrows a series. But the only thing that I will probably mention is that maybe they're leaving it because they're done with it. I mean, there's only so far that you can take a, a franchise, I would assume. And some of the little nightmares, you know, you can't keep on making games without spoiling more and more of the world or revealing more and more of it. And it has to be done, especially with little nightmares, in a way that is clever and thought about. Otherwise, it's just gonna open up plot holes and all this stuff. And I mean, already with two games, there are so many theories out there. We don't know what's true. Is the time loop true? Is it just a concurrent, like, linear story? And maybe that's one of the reasons why Tarsier are kind of done with it. They've told the story, the part of it that they wanted to. Maybe this is it. Maybe they didn't think about the lore. Maybe they didn't think about the story too much. And they just wanted to create, like they said, a world. You remember when Halo, Bungie sort of left Microsoft to take care of Halo? Hello, and that turned out great. <laughs> For me anyway, it took a plunge, it took a huge dive and I just completely lost interest in the story and the franchise as a whole. And I'm hoping that this doesn't happen to Little Nightmares, uh, especially when you think about, you know, and it was their child, it was their, you know, they're the ones that can tell that story and they're gone now. Um, and now hopefully if, if, you know, Bandai ever needs any input or any story that they can get it from them. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta wait for a little rat to stop barking. <laughs> so that's all we have to say on Little Nightmares front. Now, oh my God, there has been so much Jurassic news that came out recently. So first off, out of nowhere, Jurassic Outpost seemed to uh, upload a video of what seemed to be Jurassic World Beyond the Gates or Jurassic Park Beyond the Gates. It's weird because it's not the first time that I've 
heard of Beyond the Gates, if anybody, you know, the prehistoric site that Facebook is, uh, Beyond the Gates, there's a, there's a page there where they post loads, like a whole catalogue of things that were from production, behind the scenes and stuff like that. So when I heard about Jurassic World Beyond, Beyond the Gates, oh sorry, behind, that's called Beyond the Gates, this is Beyond the Gates. So obviously there's like some, oh that's a good idea, let's change the, the word. And in the video they showed that it was like, it was going to be Jurassic World, Jurassic Outpost and Target. Oh no, Target, no. <laughs> if anybody like me, you know, um, has anything to do with the, the the toy franchise and you know collecting over years and whatnot basically i've given up I, I don't know whether my heart's not in dinosaur toy collecting anymore that's why you haven't seen any um like from you know the official lines uh recently why i haven't seen anything from that maybe it's because we got what what we wanted uh from mattel and now i'm like okay i'm done i'm, I'm kind of done with that i enjoyed it while i did it um and since then, I've been selling a lot of this stuff because for a start, I just don't have the space. And Mattel have just made so many of them. If you were to collect them, you'd have a whole room or house dedicated to it, especially with all the old Kenneth stuff. But it was finally revealed that, uh, yes, it, it was, in fact, a collaboration between Jurassic World uh, or just Universal Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Outpost and Target. I mean, the question, the questionable thing was, what has Jurassic Outpost got to do with this? Ah, that's right. Nepotism. <laughs> Colin Trevorrow is very, um, I mean, it's good that he's, he's involved with the fan base and, um, I think that's, that, oh, that's only a good thing, really. It's only a joke, you know me. Universal, don't reach out to me, no, no, oh yes, I remember hearing of you, you're the guy who did that, yet. then you don't get in touch with me ever. Okay, great. And of course, another thing that kind of stopped me from collecting is just the dis distribution is awful, especially in the, the pandemic that we've got now, and as, or in England anyway, in the lockdown, you know, toy shops aren't open. So the only way that you can get things, I guess, is buying online. We don't have Target in the UK, and I don't think a lot of places do have Target. So this is basically American. This is a whole American thing, great. <laughs> if you live outside America, of tatas. So there's more points of articulation, the paint job and stuff is much better. And maybe that's kind of what you want. Um, the only thing is it costs a little bit more. So we've got like a, a plethora of different releases coming and each release of these dinosaurs, uh, Mr. DNA, ooh, coming Wednesday night. Ooh, I wonder if it's a collectible Mr. DNA thing. And each of the new toys that gets released has a little video to go alongside it. So we just have a quick look, I'll turn off the volume. Chris, Chris Pugh, I think it is, from Jurassic Outpost, who presents the toys. And then he introduces somebody from the Mattel design team or something, something or other who was involved in the production and creation of these toys. It's something, I guess, I get it, like Beyond the Gates, you're learning a little bit more. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think that these uh, toys and uh, stuff we're getting right now is something that is like what we wanted from the start. If Mattel dropped these toys as soon as Hasbro lost the license, people would have went friggin' crazy for them. And I, th I don't think there's any reason why people shouldn't anyway now. Um, but for me, my heart's not in it anymore and that's why I don't collect them anyway. Um, but I think if anybody still does, or, you know, anybody who collects dinosaur toys or the Jurassic Park franchise, these are beautiful, beautiful sculpts, beautiful paint jobs there. Um, even like to the, the Tyrandon who has like a wire framing in its arms. So you can pose it and, you know, do anything you want, like that would be you know, the pose that you could see a Tyrandon uh, performing. Brilliant. Top notch. I think they've done a great job. Just unfortunately, it's not for me. So a light shining on the green screen. Speaking of Jurassic World Evolution, uh, sorry, Jurassic World, I should say. We'll get to Jurassic World Evolution. Um, Luca, who uh, I've heard from various sources, is very reliable, um, had or posted this um, thing on Twitter, or he tweeted, I guess you could say, some interesting inf info regarding E750. So, you know, you had little nightmares, you have the theories, so you have Camp Cretaceous, my God, if you created content on E750, you were in for a treat. 
Um, there was so much speculation on what this thing could be. Um, I mean, looking at the image, it looks like it could have been like an Erla Dominus, especially with those back spikes and the tail and the way that the legs and stuff looked like. Uh, Luca uh, said or knew uh, something about it. I don't know whether they worked on uh, Camp Cretaceous. I think they might have. They're a 2D, 3D artist. Um, so they say that it is a hybrid. Its name ends with Rex. Uh, but they won't say the full name. Obviously, they don't want to spoil it. Uh, it's not any already existing hybrid. It's something completely new. And the picture, or picture it as something like a middle term of Indom and Indo. The Indoraptor Rex, <laughs> something like that. Um, but then, not too long after that, uh, they ended up posting this. So update on E750's name. Name was leaked on an Instagram much earlier than I expected. So here it is, the Scorpius Rex. So I'm assuming that when they said it was an in-between from Indominus Rex and Indoraptor, they didn't actually mean the name, they meant the fusing uh, of the Indominus Rex. Because we know that Hoskins was in Jurassic World talking about a smaller, more compact version of Indominus Rex, which we think was supposed to be the Indoraptor. But it's probably more likely this. Um, so this is from a Mattel, I'm assuming, um, temporary out of stock, Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic World slash and raw Scorpius Rex. So I think this was accidentally um, posted on a uh, <laughs> on a toy rack where somebody maybe have mislabeled or put out the wrong label underneath the toys or something like that. Anyway, that was a spelling mistake and it is supposed to be Scorpius uh, Rex. So we still don't know what this thing will look like, but we do have the name. Um, and of course, from this, we can tell that it's probably going to be a toy as well. We've seen a lot with the Camp Cretaceous that we've had like a, a Spinosaurus toy, uh, which is of course just the regular Spinosaurus, but with new paint. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always been a thing with collectors. It's like, it's the same, but it's got a different paint job. Gotta buy it. <laughs> but moving on to more Jurassic World news. I know this time on to Evolution. Um, just quickly going through onto the Jurassic World Evolution Twitter, uh, onto their tweets and replies. Um, so for instance, this was something that they posted not too long ago. They were going through their back catalog as, as I made aware of it, that they were sort of promoting the DLCs and stuff like that. Uh, and this just so happened to be uh, in response to those posts. So this is a post of a Mayasaur, uh, and somebody oh, by the name of Kai Ninja or K Ninja says, um, question, what plans do you have for the game this year? As it has been over a year since Jura or Frontier, I should say, uh, have posted anything on Jurassic World Evolution, leading us to believe that it's over. And for me as well, I thought once they got rid of that, you know, the, once they did the Jurassic Park, um, they still had like some sort of timeline of events or things that they were going to post. But because of COVID, because of quarantine and stuff like that, it all got hindered. And because the movie got pushed back, now there was just a whole year of dead space. A Jurassic World Dominion should be coming out in a couple of months. Um, but that had to be pushed back, which meant it just left an empty space in the entire Jurassic community of like, oh, okay, so we just gotta wait <laughs> where nothing is gonna come out. Which is why when it came to that Beyond the Gates, because they showed a T-Rex roaring and it was all animated and stuff, people thought, wow, okay, we're gonna get something. This is great. And the fact, for me anyway, that it was a toy line, I was a little bit disappointed. And it's not, you know, Jurassic Outpost's fault. It's just, you know, we were hoping for something a bit more. <laughs> I mean, to fill in the space between Fallen Kingdom and Dominion, what have we really had? We've had Camp Cretaceous, which isn't too bad. We've had the DLCs and of course, you know, Jurassic World Evolution, which has seen us through. Let's be honest, between the two, if we're talking about two table legs, what's the stuff on top? It's just been Jurassic World Evolution. That's all we've had in terms of games. I mean, Jurassic World Alive and Jurassic World The Game, but as far as, you know, something that is really, really big, um, and I think it's just been Jurassic World Evolution and Camp Cretaceous, just a little sprinkling on top. But they say, I'm question what are the plans for the game this year? And Jurassic World Evolution, actually responded saying, hi K Ninja, we're working on something new and we have more news to share about it later in the year. Um, again, I feel like maybe this actually helped them uh, polish this game that's gonna be coming out, but I have a feeling that this could be the Jurassic World Evolution 2 title. Of course, it's not gonna be called Jurassic World Evolution 2. Um, and I'm really trying to 
rack my brains about if they are going to continue with Jurassic World Evolution, what are they going to do? It's been so long. The mods and people who've modded the game have made it just way better than Frontier. I mean, Frontier could do whatever they wanted with it, I think, up, to, up until, you know, Jurassic World and Universal have their say-so. But as far as terrain tools and, you know, building outside the map, dinosaur species, all this jazz, it's been done with the mods of the game. And I don't think that Jurassic World Evolution can really do anything extra to... At this point, if they were to add a, a dinosaur DLC pack to the game, for money. I don't know how many people would buy it at this point, unless it's console, because pe the people on console cannot mod the game. Um, but this isn't the only time that they've mentioned this, because if we have a look here, um, this was another post, uh, somebody actually tweeted or tagged them or whatever, saying that they got all the achievements or something like that. Um, somebody in that response, I think, posted, or, or maybe it's something different. Anyway, they said that we're not quite ready to reveal anything just yet, this is Frontier, um, but we will have more to share later this year, and this is a common occurrence. Uh, we have another one here for a reply from Johnny, or to Johnny. The Jurassic World Evolution team is still hard at work. Uh, keep an eye on our social channels. We're looking forward to sharing what they're working on later this year. So, again, they're just sort of pacifying. I think Frontier have given the go-ahead for their social team to show that they are working on something. I mean, if they did it last year, and then, you know, it was all pushed back a whole year, there would be a huge gap. Um, but now I think they've, you know, we have they've got official lock-in dates for the the movie and all the other lead-ups. When you think about Jurassic World, right, there hasn't really been too much of a push with it. Um, you, when you look at, you know, the what Jurassic Park was, what the Lost World was, when you had the toys, you had the plent bountiful amounts of games. You you couldn't even open up a thingy of cereal without having a dinosaur from the Lost World popping up in there, a bag of crisps even, you had a little pop-up thing. But with Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom, it really has left like, oh, one game. There you go. Oh, an app game. Good. Now what? And hopefully with Dominion being the end of this franchise, we'll call it the Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard franchise, because really that's what it is. You, even the Jurassic series wasn't the Alan Grant or Jeff Goldblum series, but definitely Jurassic World is, it's the Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard series. Um, with that finally wrapping up in 2022 with Dominion, um, we'll so hopefully that, you know, they're gonna put together a more, uh, like a bigger whole like, like cele celebra celebratory celebration of the end of it all with toys, with games, with God knows what else, all these promotions, and not just freaking Target exclusive things where the rest of the world can't do anything about it. Yay! And finally, on a little bit of a lighter note, I guess it's all good, really, um, we have this... Oh my God, I don't even know. I don't even know where to start with this. I mean, I know that Facebook is prehistoric, but while I was scrolling through, God knows why, um, I came across this by the Gaming Bible, quoted with the next or a next gen Dino Crisis would be unreal. And then they proceeded to show this game. Dino Crisis Spiritual Successor coming 2022, and it looks stunning. Let's see just what Gaming Bible were given. Looks amazing and it's coming in 2022. Instinction is an upcoming game from Hashbane Interactive. Channeling Capcom's beloved survival horror series. To deliver a modern take on an age old cult classic. According to the new game's press release. This is hard. Sorry, Instinction will be a dinosaur survival game with modern mechanics. Wow. Serving up a compelling story. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even take it seriously. How should Paint Interactive say they made the game to play, to pay homage to the original? <laughs> and offer in <laughs> interchangeable first and third person gameplay perspectives. Oh my god. Is I mean, is that the Primal Carnage thingy there? Instinction will release 2022 for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X. 
What is, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I'm sick of this now, I'm sick. Does anybody else see this and just like, oh God, why is there a Smilodon there? This is, you're marketing this as the Dino Crisis spiritual successor. What is going on? This is a load of horse crap. And I don't understand why Gaming Bible are, are trying to push it. What have we seen here? We've seen a static, or sorry, a, a, a Brachiosaur in the background. You know, oh, it, it bites a little bit. Have we not seen this gun before? Have we not? We have, of course, remember that game? I mean, it was a Jurassic Park thing and it was supposed to be a fan game and this was just a little mini game. But how easy is it to just plunk a gun into a game to buy assets and then say, hey, look, it's a- What, what about this is Dino Crisis? Crisis? What about this is freaking Dino Crisis? Uh, oh, there's a dinosaur there, just doing some animations. Hey, look, a laser sight running through the woods. Oh yeah, that reminds me of Regina and freaking the rest of the cast. Yes, of course. And a Spinosaur. It's all the paleontologically accurate Spinosaur, because God knows Dino Crisis was meant about all that. Ha! <laughs> this image in particular. Oh yes, Dino Crisis. That's the one, a freaking Tupac or a God knows whatever Pteranodon that is. But the Great Wall of Dino Crisis. Dude, yeah, just shoot the walls. Yes, oh, show the gameplay. I mean, it's a joke. This is a... There's no way anybody could take this seriously. Um, can we just see the comments? I'm does it remotely resemble Dino Crisis other than it has dinosaurs in? I'm guessing this is part of their paid ad seeing so many articles of using similar wording. Okay, so it's a bit like if you remember when Path of Titans came out, they they paid Gaming Bible, or maybe they didn't pay them, but they sent the press out to Gaming Bible. They sent the press out Lad Bible or whatever it is. And these companies, they just eat it up because what is it to them? It's free advertising for them, Gaming Bible. Volatile. <laughs> That's the word. It's kind of volatile. Who remembers Mesozoica? That was supposed to be paying homage to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis and was, you know, supposed to be its spiritual successor. These buzzwords now are just so overused. I'm sick of them. Absolutely sick of them. The more dinosaur games, the better. But it's so obvious that this is just an asset flip. I mean, I'm sorry, Hashbane game. Maybe you have the, the best intentions. But to quote Alan Grant, some of the worst things imaginable have been done with the best intentions. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this is frickin' on Indiegogo or Kickstarter in two seconds. Hold on, let's Hashbane interact. Let's have a look at that. Here we go, instinction, instinction, instinction. Oh my God, who even goes to other websites these days when you get greeted with that? And again, people just, people pick up on it. There's absolutely nothing in that article or press release that makes it seem remotely like Dino Crisis. I mean, there you go. You want, a, I mean, you play this. You, you'll basically get the same experience, if not even better. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that was, oh, so much news. And I just wanted to, have a video out there because I need to play catch up. There's been so much coming out there and I've been completely uh, absorbed in the Little Nightmares universe. And of course, a little bit of light, Little Nightmares news scattered at the start there. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye bye.